Hello and welcome back to the Villa Filler podcast. I'm here as always with my good friend Dan Wiseman. Dan, not live and direct this time, but I mean, how fun was that, mate? That was great. Yeah, brilliant, brilliant. Uh, something that I think we're going to do a bit more, aren't we? I think we, we were sort of saying off air yesterday that the plan going forward would be to go live to announce a player when, when you know, the, the news drops and all you guys are coming to YouTube looking for our, our take on things we'll go live uh, to discuss it and you can you know we ended up going a bit off piece yesterday didn't we mate like people were coming at us with with questions of their own and we ended up talking about all sorts um so we thought we'd give cal his due diligence today but i think this is going to be the way forward isn't it mate we'll, we'll do the live when we announce the transfer and then afterwards we'll give you a bit more of a deeper dive um we'll try and stay on topic in an episode that comes out afterwards um which hopefully will tell you everything about what you can expect from uh, from Callum Chambers mate absolutely but before we get into all of that first of all guys we have a message from today's video sponsor Dan have you ever wanted an app that collates all the scores and news from your favorite teams in the whole of Europe Dan have you ever wanted that is, is a constant need of mine, mate, because there's always news. That's the thing, is that we're, we, we love this game. We love the industry of football because it's ever-changing, mate, and you need a place to keep up with it all. And we have that place exactly for we you sure guys. Do, mate. It's one football, Guys, this app is genuinely, it's life-changing. It's great because I actually already I, I use it. Um, so it's like it's great because it's where I pull the stats from for the podcast so it's like there's also there's all that new stuff as well but you you can track all of the players stats from like across Europe for all the different leagues for continental football as well uh, it's, it's it's a dream it's a dream and the best part mate is it's free it's free and guys it would help support the channel massively if you check that one football using the link in the description down below we promise you guys won't be disappointed so yeah, guys, if you haven't checked out One Football, make sure you do so using the top link in the description. It helps Dan out, it helps me out. Uh, we would really appreciate that. We're coming to the end of our little stint with One Football. So to anyone who may be annoyed by that, uh, that the advert that is constantly played. I mean, I, I think I can recite it now, word for word. Now, <laughs> I do watch back the podcasts, um, and yeah, I, I could probably recite it. But we'd really appreciate it if you guys click the link downloaded one football uh, it helps us out more than you could ever imagine um yep. but yeah callum chambers dan as we were saying yesterday uh, we probably we did a 50 minute stream and it was about five minutes callum chambers wasn't it um which was great fun and i think if anything that just opens the door up for more sort of general q a streams or we'll kind of get that stuff going off the back of the uh, morgan and wise football manager series that we are dying to bring back um but no today we, we're talking callum chambers and I think it, what's good as well, you know, you kind of got our initial reaction sort of as it was unfolding yesterday. You know, we've been able to sleep on it. We've been able to think about it a little bit more. Um, and, and to be perfectly honest, Dan, again, I think this is it's a fine bit of business, really. I think we should probably start with that. It's, uh, it's reported that he is, you know, he, his, his contract is up in the summer. So we've kind of taken him. Um, on a free there are some some places saying that there's been a very minimal fee that's been sort of handed over which again wouldn't surprise me um I, I couldn't imagine anything more than a couple hundred thousand um probably you're probably looking at paying maybe like half of the remainder of his wages i i would i would hazard a guess um so maybe it's a bit more than a couple hundred thousand um but for the price dan and for the sort of I think potential is probably the word, untapped potential, um, that, that Villa are, are getting with Callum Chambers. I don't think, we, again, I'd like to, to kind of repeat what I was saying yesterday, man. I don't think anyone could really complain too much at this one. No, I think you're absolutely right, mate. I think it's one of those where um, it's, hard, it's hard to to feel at all aggrieved with it, to be honest with you, because I think he's actually... Uh, a slightly better player than I thought we were going to attract for that role in the squad, you know, assuming he's going to come in and, and sort of fill in that third, fourth choice um, centre-back role. Um, he's very high profile and it's interesting that he's come to Villa because he basically had that role at uh, at Arsenal. I think this, this deal has been done probably um, because he can play right back too. And I think that's that's a position where we do need a little bit of cover for because, you know, if anything happens to Matty, we've got young Kane Kessler who were actually, you know, we, we were talking about on the live. Um, so there's an example of just how far off-paced uh, we went. 
Um, yeah. <laughs> we ended up talking about that. And I was saying that yeah, he's, he's a brilliant player, but he's not quite ready, I don't think, for Premier League football yet. Um, certainly in over, over a prolonged period. You know, if anything happened to um, to Matty Cash, or let's say, you know, he left for Atletico Madrid, um, having okay. someone like Callum who can step in um, on that in that right back spot would be perfect because, you know, that's where he came through at, at Southampton. That's where... Um, he was originally sort of pipped to play. He's ended up being moved to centre back, but he's got he's got that versatility, and I, I think that's probably what has um, caused Villa to go for him because I think we need those positions, especially in the defence where they, they can cover one spot. Like we've seen with Courtney, we've we've used Courtney at left back. But, you know, Dean even used Ezri at right back. Then and doesn't that feel foolish? Now we know the centre back that he's gone on to become. Um, so it's proved useful in recent seasons, and I think that ability to hop in at right back uh, will be will be very useful. Towards the end yeah, of the no, it, it was, and that's the thing, man. It's like it's it's options, and again, you know, as as, as we kind of mentioned yesterday, how do you recruit for a position where you're going to have to spend, you know, anywhere around or up from the sort of thirty million pound mark to get someone better in than Mings and Conta? Um, I think you've only you've you've got to look really. I, I think Newcastle looking at someone like Diego Carlos and Sevilla, and obviously Sevilla were holding out for more because they knew Newcastle had the money, but. Rejecting like 40 million euros for someone like Diego Carlos, that's the, that's the kind of money it's going to take to get in someone that's better than Mings and Conta. Um, and I think Callum Chambers, he, he's got a lot to prove, um, I think, for himself. And not only will this be like right back cover down, but like realistically, since Esri has broken into the team, there hasn't been any genuine competition for him at, at, on that sort of right side of, of, of the, of the centre half pairing which I think is important as well. I don't think Callum is coming to play second fiddle to anyone, um, which is interesting as well. He's only made two Premier League appearances so far, uh, made appearances like in the Cup and that. Um, he's played six games in total, starting three, predominantly at that right-back spot. And um, if my memory serves correctly, that would have been before uh, Tommy Asu would have came in as well and, and really sort of made that position his own. Um, which, you know, funnily enough, when you think of the kind of player that Tommy Asu is, he's very much in the same vein as, as Callum Chambers, Dan. I would, if I'm being honest, I'd play Tommy Asu at centre-half. I think he's a fantastic defender. I think he reads the game really well. Doesn't necessarily have that pace to be playing at fullback, And he's more of the, uh, I think it's described as the elbow in the defence, you know, kind yes. of th- that, that linchpin um, that allows, whether that's Tierney or... Um, Nuno Tavares to, to, to bomb forward. Um, I think they're quite similar. And if I'm being honest, I'm, I'm, I am a, I'm a bit excited about this, Dan, because this, there's, there's not too many stats for us to go into, which is kind of frustrating because, again, the guy hasn't really played too much football um, this season. But, you know, some impressive things just to note from just a little surface level research. Uh, he's averaging 89% pass accuracy. Uh, which is wonderful. Uh, 98% of his passes he makes in his own half are accurate, which is remarkable. That is exactly where you expect it to be, if we're being honest. But, you know, not everybody can play out from the back, so that's something really important. Um, and we know that he's he's comfortable on the ball. He's averaging about one and a half interceptions per game, which, again, them stats, it's kind of hard to draw a lot from that because he's been playing fullback, realistically. That isn't a position where you are nabbing the ball you know you're, you're stepping in front of a winger and nabbing the ball usually you are chasing the winger um and having to to, to put some tackles in and 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 you know do the hard work in in that sense um but again i think you know i think it's it, it just makes sense on a lot of levels and i think the point again to reference something i mentioned on the live yesterday like bringing him on and free and, you know, let's assume, let's assume we're paying him like 80 grand a week. I think with the way Villa's wage bill is, you know, we can afford to be spending a bit more and he would have been on quite a bit at Arsenal. So I think, you know, 80 grand a week is a conservative guess. Um, so, you know, across the season, that's barely over like four and a half mil. We've got him for free. Obviously there's been a nominal fee that has been included allegedly. Um you're not going to get this much sort of unfulfilled potential for that cost. And again, to reference Newcastle, Dan, while they're going out and trying to chase, you know, Diego Carlos for, for 40 million euros, we've gone and signed Callum Chambers for free. 
that is a that is a player who could most definitely walk into Newcastle and improve their defence like to no end. Yeah, hundred percent. That I think that's that, that's the perfect word for it, mate. It just feels smart. Uh, I think it's you know there's. We, we have to consider as well, you're right, there's not a lot of stats for him this season. The most recent appearance he made was in Arsenal's 0-0 draw at Anfield with Liverpool uh, in the Cup. Uh, he was actually on the bench, but ended up playing about 80 minutes because um, Cedric Suarez uh, started at right back, but um, he had to come off, uh, in, I think it was after about 10 minutes or so. So it's, it's one of those where we've seen him play quite recently and, and keep a credible clean sheet. So, you know, the, there's that recency stuff. But if you look back at his whole career, um, you know, 151 Premier League appearances, 27 appearances in European football across the Champions League and the Europa League, three England caps. Um, he's won an FA Cup. Um, and here's where it gets really interesting, mate. So you've got, he's actually made more starts at right back than at centre back. So, Perhaps that is the position that he's being brought into to help out with. Maybe it is right back more so than centre half. He's made 103 appearances at right back, 82 at centre half. But then this is what's very interesting: is he's made 40 appearances in the Premier League in defensive midfield. Now I saw, um, you know, he had a loan at Fulham, and I, I saw a few people banning him out on social media the other day, and I do apologise. I'd like to think I've got a decent knowledge of the game, but I'm not too familiar with Fulham's 2017-18 season. If I am, I certainly can't recall much of it. Um, but I, I saw a few people saying that he won Player of the Season playing in defensive midfield. Uh, and I checked it out, he did indeed win, win Player of the Season, and given the amount of times that he's played in that position, it, it, it would make sense. And as we know, as Villa fans are very keen to address, uh, we are looking for uh, a defensive midfielder, apparently. And so that is another position that this guy can cover. And I think when you put it together, you, yes, there's this nominal fee involved. I mean, the, the amount of money that we're paying his wages still feels, uh, you know, I, I still feel like the people will, will worry about that. But I mean, guys, if we if we want to go to the top and we want to get into Europe, we've got to get our heads around the fact that in the, today's game, 80 grand a week isn't a lot when you're shopping and you want to be playing in that kind of market. You know, you want to be going and playing Europe League football. You've got to be looking at paying players above six figures, um, you know, if you, if you want to be bringing the top names in. So it's one of those where, um, yeah, just just feels like smart business, mate. You know, we spoke about it on, on the live being a bit like the Ashley Young deal, where it just, if you, you struggle to come up with any possible qualms, I think it's the same. I think it's the same. And in, in the same way that Young has been uh, not a bit part that feels a bit harsh, but, you know, he's had his moments yeah. this season where we've needed him to come in and he, he's done a job. I think Callum will be the same. He's someone that you can rely on, someone that you can bring into the uh, you can bring into the team in a variety of different positions. And, you know, you're going to get a six or a seven out of ten every week. Um, and that, you know, when we're in this game of chasing consistency and finding consistent results to, to get us at the table, it can be very important. For sure, man. And, you know, just, just to kind of take a, a little look at his time at Fulham. Um, in the midfield, he's, he's standing around that six feet mark, which again would add a lot of height to our midfield, which we don't really seem to have. I mean, you know, we're, we're like 6'3", Dan, 6'2". Um, and, you know, we, we are probably, you know, giants in comparison. Um, but, you know, that extra bit of height at the base of the midfield is something that I certainly would like. I think everybody would like in their ideal DM um, and and ultimately again there isn't too much to judge him off in this position but um, some things that have impressed me are first of all his pressures um, when he was at Fulham uh, 261 across the whole season again he's got that height he's, he's a bit more of a physical presence his tackle success rate wasn't as impressive as I would like uh, at the around the sort of 38% mark. Again, it's his first season playing competitive football in that position. Um, I don't think you can look too much into that, if I'm being honest. But um, I just, what I, what I like about, what, what I'm like about what I'm seeing here, Dan, is, again, with the high pass completion, with the pressures up there, being at quite an impressive number, in my opinion, this is someone who is 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 a proactive player in this midfield, and you know how many times are we complaining about uh, about you know Dougie or Marvel, whoever, maybe just being that little bit too late, letting the game go by, and, and being reactive. I think ultimately 
you know, what, what we're seeing is, is someone who wants to be on the ball and is constantly looking, looking to, to win possession back for his team. And when he has the ball, you can trust him to lay it off to, to a teammate. Um, you know, I mean, as well, when he was at Fulham, he, in, the, in the sort of the middle third of the pitch, he's averaging, um, I don't know why I've said averaging, he, <laughs> he made, uh, he's made around the 1,100 mark um, and he played like, he played 28 games. So I guess that averages to around 30 touches a game, if my maths is correct, in, in the sort of the middle of the park, exactly where you expect him to be. Um, so yeah, I mean that's one that that's really impressive. Um, I think it can be better. It just depends, I, I, and I don't think we'll really know until he plays for Villa Dan what the plan is with him because he is so versatile. Um, I don't think I don't think he's going to come in and play DM, but it would be quite interesting to see him sort of anchor that that base of the midfield. Yeah, I, I think this is this is probably a, this is a shame when we're out of the cups. Because they would have been a perfect chance yeah. to try that, um, you know. If, if we had, you know, some some FA Cup games against lower opposition and like that, it's a shame we didn't get through against United because it would be really interesting to try that out because he's got a great frame for it. Um, you know, he, he physically he he would stand up to that test, and you know, as I said, if he he seemed to do very well in that in that position for Fulham, so I think when you look at you know. The, those kind of assets and the fact that Arsenal fans are, weren't too pleased. They were just as surprised as we were, but weren't too pleased. You know, they're really, they're really not liking Cedric Suarez uh, at the Emirates. The fans struggle to get on board with that. And it, it seems that Arteta very much nailed his colours to that particular mast. So it, it's one of those where I think that's always good as well. You know, when you can see that other fans are slightly aggrieved to be letting him go, that's usually a good sign. He's someone that sort of, um, has really he's been on a bit of a renaissance in recent seasons doesn't it feel that like he sort of fell off the map a little bit and then in recent years he's sort of come back into the limelight a little bit more and you're starting to hear his name and I think this is a, is a good move to slightly move out of that sort of a small fish in a very big pond at Arsenal and sort of come into someone a club like Villa where it's a bit more personable that there isn't that sort of egos in the dressing room and he can come out and sort of mellow out and, and really establish himself and, and spend you know, three and a half years, which is a sizable contract that would take him just into his 30s, playing some of his better football. We've got him for his peak years, and I think it's a nice environment to currently be in for a player like Callum, where he can step out of that kind of dressing room and what is a tumultuous period for Arsenal, to say the least. And come on, come with to somewhere where we're on the up, we're going to be trying exciting things, and who knows, we might be able to put that European experience to the test in seasons to come. It's an attractive proposition for him. It is, man. And and guys, we'd love to know your thoughts on this in the comment section down below. I'm really looking forward to seeing him play. I genuinely am. Um, Don in the number 16. Now, Dan, the last versatile fullback we had who wore number 16 was one James Bree. Um, Let's hope it goes better than that. As we expected, did it? I mean, I still think there's a player in James Bree. I mean, not clearly not for where we're playing, but um, you know, he's back at Luton Town now. And uh, yeah, I think that's, that's another career that we've we've put down the shitter at Villa, isn't it really? It's a shame. Um, but yeah, hopefully Callum Chambers has a more successful Villa career than James Bree. And uh, yeah, let us know your thoughts on this transfer in the comments down below. Where do you guys think his best position will be? And Arsenal fans as well. Um, we've seen you guys in the comments before. Um, so yeah, if you guys are watching this, let us know your thoughts on Chambers as you will have kept a closer eye on him than we certainly have. Um, and if you guys haven't subscribed, make sure you do so by hitting the button below and make sure you hit the bell button so you never miss a podcast or video from us here at Heart of the Hole. Up the Villa.